So could you tell me how you met uh, Francis Baker? Well, it was very simple, really. I Well, it seems simple now. Perhaps at the time it didn't seem simple. I didn't know what I was doing. I, uh, For some reason, I'd taken over a magazine. I was studying art history at Cambridge. This is 1963, a very long time ago. And um, uh, somebody said to me, if you're going to do an issue of your magazine on modern art in Britain, you absolutely have to meet Francis Bacon. And I'd never heard the name Francis Bacon for a painter. I said, don't be mad. That's an Elizabethan philosopher who's been dead for 500 years. I said, no, 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 this is a painter. And he's just had a retrospective at the Tate. Uh, and uh, people think he's the most important new painter in England. So I just went along to Soho. I, um, a friend of mine's mother had been photographed by a man called John Deakin. And this friend had said to me, go to the French pub in Soho, um, which is where the free French used to meet during the war. And uh, try and get to meet John Deacon. And if you're lucky, he'll introduce you to Bacon. So I just went along not knowing, you know, I mean, I was 20 or something and uh, didn't know anything about anything. Uh, and I just stood around with a drink at midday. Um, <laughs> it was very sunny outside, a bit like today, and inside very dark and dank. And I suddenly recognised John Deacon, I'd seen photos of him, and I went up and rather nervously I said, um, oh hello, uh, I was wondering, I'm a friend of so-and-so's, I was wondering whether you could introduce me to uh, Francis Bacon. And um, John was very camp, of course I didn't know him then, but uh, he was very, very camp and he was sort of sitting there with a uh, a cigarette holder smoking <laughs> and sort of said uh, I don't know my dear now that she's become so famous whether she'd meet a mere student like you uh, and Bacon was standing at the bar a few sort of backs down the bar and he suddenly whipped round and said uh, now don't listen to that old fool I adore students what are you having to drink <laughs> so I just sort of, you know, and then I was I was there with him and we chatted and he was absolutely charming and magnetic and fun. Um, and he said, what are you doing for lunch? Because I wasn't doing anything for lunch. Uh, and he swept me off and, uh, you know, suddenly there were lots of oysters and Chablis and champagne. And, uh, and then we just continued. But I remember, you know, I didn't get, uh, I was with him from then around 12 one day until about four the next morning because we went to the East End to a party and uh, and I'd never seen a life like that, you know? There's a sort of strange party in a pub called the Waterman's Arms and all sorts of people. Uh, there, was, um, there was that man who committed suicide, poor thing, because he was in that uh, Christine Keeler scandal. I don't know if you remember all that, but there was a whole thing about that that uh, involved the British establishment um, over um, state secrets and all sorts of things. Uh, anyway, he was there, and uh, of course I didn't know anybody, uh, but Bacon looked after me and made sure that I was okay, and so I started going back to see him. I had this interview to do with him, so uh, that was a good pretext, and I kept going back because... Um, I hugely enjoyed being with him and he fascinated me, really fascinated But the, the, the surprising thing in a way is that he, he was fascinated by you too. It became a real friendship, right? I suppose so. I mean, I think he was, I don't know if he was fascinated by me. I suppose he was attracted. He, he particularly liked, um, um, well, he liked, you see, the, the odd thing is that he liked heterosexuals. And he always thought that he could, you know, he could just sort of convert them. Um, uh, I think I was rather more difficult than most to convert. But uh, um, so there was that tension between us. And then uh, I guess I was quite, I didn't talk as much then as I do now. I was quite a good listener. And he liked the fact that um, we could talk about art, we could talk about painting, about books and so on, and that I spoke several languages and um, I think I was one of many young men who were very, and women of course, because he was very attractive to women. Uh, and he had lots of um, lots of very close women friends. I mean women adored him. Women fell in love with him. That was 
sort of another disaster uh, because of you know there was no no future there. Um, but he uh, he just you know he charmed the birds off the trees. Um, um, <laughs> and so it became a, f a friendship till the end of his life. Yes, right? with some ups and downs, but it was a friendship right until the end. Uh, and on the whole, uh, for me, a hugely positive experience. People say that I got completely burnt, and uh, I don't know in the relationship. Perhaps it's true. I don't know. You know, you Why can't burnt? tell. Well, there was something very, uh, very dark and powerful in Francis. Um, I was fascinated by it. I don't think, I think he had a positive influence on me on the whole. But of course, we led this, you know, when you were with him, you led this completely crazy life. I mean, you got, you drank more in an evening with him than you would in a, in a month or so, uh, even if you liked drinking. I mean, it was just sort of relentless bottle after bottle after bottle um, and you had to keep up with it if you didn't he'd start filling your glass so that it overflowed so you felt obliged well, once with me I mean I, I, I don't know whether you've seen that book of mine but uh, this memoir um, uh, I tried not to I had such an awful hangover I arrived feeling so ill I thought well that's it you're not drinking anything and there was a sort of just the two of us there was a sort of kind of you know um, face off and so he kept filling my glass and I kept not drinking and he kept filling it so it started to spill over and I still didn't drink it um, and I was a bit scared because you know he was far my senior 30 something years older than me and famous and uh, you know and everything and I was just a sort of obscure young man um, but I wasn't going to do it and then uh, he called the wine waiter, we were in some posh restaurant, called the wine waiter over and he said, I'm afraid my, my friend doesn't seem to like this wine. Uh, so it's me, sort of. <laughs> uh, and the, uh, the wine waiter, very concerned, he said, oh, sort of, you know, Petrus or whatever it was. And so they looked very carefully and I saw that right at the end of the list, there was something, the price was just sort of, you know, it was, uh, even then it was probably in four figures or something, you know. So Francis ordered it, uh, you know, the wine waiter very reverentially came back, you know, had it in a, uh, decanted in a carafe and so on and filled my glass. And of course, what let everybody watch. <laughs> <laughs> what could 